Hey there, everybody. Don Evans here from WatchReport.com, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Trintec Zulu 07 Pro. Trintec has been around since 1984. They are an aviation watch and accessories company. You can get uh, watches, uh, compasses, and uh, accessories that deal with aviation. This is their newest model. Now, they ran a Kickstarter campaign uh, for this earlier in the year. Now, what it was is they had most of the tooling and most of everything done. They needed some extra money uh, to continue production. Uh, they were obviously successfully funded. And here's the watch you see in front of you. Now, this watch comes in two variations, the sandblasted and uh, PVD bezel model that you see before you and an all black PVD version as well. Now let's get right into the specs and the price. The price is $699 USD, and you can get it from Trintech Watch's website, which is trintech.com. This is a very large watch. Now, it's not super, super, super oversized. There are watches, of course, out there that are bigger, but, and it's going to be hard, of course, to try and tell in a video. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do here, and I'm not trying to promote another brand in a review, I just want to give you a size. So this is the Trintec. It is 47 millimeters. This is the Victorinox Swiss Army Inox. Let me just take a look here at the size difference of the two watches. You can see that this is a big, big watch. It is also very, very, very chunky. Okay. So here are the specs. You have a 47 millimeter case. Lug to lug is 56 millimeters. You have a 24 millimeter lug width. This is using a Miyota 9015 automatic movement, as you can see here with the exhibition case back, 200 meters water resistant, a sapphire crystal, and it is 17 millimeters thick. It also has a tremendous coating of Super Luminova here on the hands and markers. You can see the loom shots at watchreport.com. The loom on this is um, spectacular. So let's get into design of the watch here a little bit. Now, you know, you have a timing bezel. This is not a dive watch. It is 200 meters water resistant. So, of course, if you wanted to use this to dive, I believe that you could. You have your timing bezel. You have your screw down crown. So I don't think that that would be an issue. But this is an aviation inspired watch. This is actually inspired by, you know, clocks in a cockpit. Um, you know, from the World War II era through the 70s. You have your large dial here with your 12, 9, 3, and 6 Arabic numbers. And as you can see, the case is somewhat, I'm going to say, inspired by, you know, Bell and Ross watches. But the reality is, is it's inspired by the clocks and the way the clocks were put in the uh, dashboard of the cockpit. So if you want to take a look, and, uh, you know, Google those images or take a look at Trintec's website and they'll show you the same thing. So I think more that they're going for that look as opposed to copying Bell and Ross. And, uh, hey, just because one company made a watch that looked like, you know, a clock from a cockpit does not mean that other uh, companies can't do it either. As I said, you do have a big screw down crown and let me get a close up here. You can see it has that nice knurling on there so you can get a good grip. It is unbranded. They decided not to overbrand this watch. There's not a lot of writing on the dial. Very nice dial. You got your date right at the four. And that's something I want to point out too. It's not stuck somewhere between the four and the five or between the three and the four or way out in the middle of the dial. It's at the four o'clock. Other people, uh, other companies should take note of that because a lot of the times the date looks uh, like it was just a huge afterthought. See if I can get a close up here on the dial for you. So you can see those hands. 
and how thick the loom is applied to the markers and the outer track. Give you a good look at the watch overall here. Like I said, you do have a bead blaster to sand blasted case. You have screws for the band attachment. This is a silicone strap. We'll talk about that more in a minute. And you get your choice of um, Zulu style straps with it. That one, of course, is orange. As I said, this is running the Miyota 9015 automatic movement. If you have been watching any of my reviews or reading them, um, you know, 9015 is used by a bunch of micro brands at this point, and for good reason. It's a fantastic movement. It's pretty damn accurate. It has a great smooth sweep second, as you could see here. I have nothing wrong with this movement at all. Now, I will say $700, you're getting towards the top of what other companies are doing with the same movement. But this is a much different case than, and when I say case, I mean case and style and design. I'm going to throw one brand out there, very close in uh, price to this, Bachette Harpoon, $650, Miyota 9015. Now, as I've said before, I'm not trying to sell you the watch. I'm trying to give you some um, subjectiveness, if you will, as to, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll see comments right off the bat. Oh, my God, $700. It's a Miyota 9015. Okay. If you actually do your research, yes, there are brands, uh, you know, out there doing, you know, a Miyota 9015 these days for, two, you know, $300, $400, $500, et cetera. There are also brands that are charging 600, 650, 700, 800, 1,000. Uh, there's a recent brand we reviewed here on Loom, uh, excuse me, on Watch Report that has, uh, you know, it's just about $1,000 and it's using Miyota 9015. The whole point, movement does not dictate the price overall all the time. Okay, so just because it's a Miyota 9015 movement, you know, the movement is not the sum of all parts of a watch. There's a lot of things that go into factor the price of a watch. You have design, you have tooling, and you have much more. Now, again, you could look at this watch and say, oh, $700 for that, I don't like it. That is your opinion, and you are entitled to it. We are not here to sell you the watch. We are here to present it to you and talk about it. Overall, I have to say, um, being honest, I like the look of the watch. I like the style of the watch. Um, I've looked this watch all over. It is very well built. It is very well finished. Everything is smooth. Everything is nice. And it is comfortable despite being so large. That said, a little large for my taste these days. Actually, it's a good couple millimeters large for my taste these days in the 42 to 44 millimeter range. Would I love to see this in a 44 millimeter? Yeah. Because with these square style cases, you know, the watch is going to appear even larger than its stated specs. So this is a beast of a watch between the height and the uh, width and dimensions overall. I did say I'd speak about the strap here. And um, while it looks nice, I'm not a fan of silicone because, as you can see, lint and dirt magnet. Uh, that and it is also, you know, if you're wearing it in the summer, it can get sweaty. But of course, I said 24 millimeter lugs. So if you wanted to switch this out with any other kind of strap, that should not be an issue at all. Put on a nice isoprene, Hirsch, any kind of rubber or a leather strap, and it would look great. Let me give you a look on my seven and a half inch wrist, so you could see how big this watch actually is okay. now if you've followed any of my reviews and you watch our videos here now when you go lug to lug here I mean it's basically taken up all of my wrist and this is a brick of a watch I mean it's it's large there's nothing that you know no way around that but if you like a large watch this is going to be for you you know, there's going to be a bunch of comments. Oh, it's too large. It's too big. It's too this. That's personal. You know, that's subjective. I personally 
find it too large for wearing myself. Not that the watch is too large. The watch is, is what it is. It's a large watch. Some people like them. Some people don't. Some people don't like small watches. You know, Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors, etc. There's something out there for everybody. As far as build quality, this watch is built fantastic. Um, there's really nothing beyond this strap choice here that I do not like about it. Um, and so far, I have not found any issues. And if I do find any issues uh, out, you could check out my full review on watchreport.com. Going to uh, wear this watch for a couple more days, maybe another week or so. And then I'm going to write my written review. So check out the written review at watchreport.com. There will be a link in the description below. Give us a like or a comment here on YouTube. As always, please try and be respectful. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you are not, you'll never miss another video or review. Like us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You could like Trintech on uh, Instagram and Facebook as well. This has been Don Evans for WatchReport.com, giving you, hopefully, the best look at the Trintec Zulu 07 Pro. And I will see you on the next video.